Hi, good morning, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 320, and we're here live in my studio this morning. You know, it was um, a little too cold for me this morning. I was planning on going uh, for a bike ride to the beach, and I just woke up with a chill and just said, you know what, I can't do it today, so I'm sorry about that. And in the back of my mind, I was really excited to show you some things in my studio anyway, so when my body said I can't do cold at the beach this morning, <laughs> I think it's 48, 49, 50, something like that and windy. And I just said, you know what? It's a good day to uh, show how beads and yarn go together in my studio. So if you're joining me live, that's why we're here. Uh, hopefully you can see my desk. If you can't, we're gonna figure that out. Maybe I scoot it back a little bit. If you're joining me live, please say hello. Let me know if you're crafting this morning. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Hi, Grace, Sherry, J Gail, Ruthie, uh, Karen, thanks for joining live. Yeah, can you see, how far up can you see my desk? Doesn't look like it's that much. We either need to move, let's see, we can move this. Yeah, my hair was meant to be in a hat to going to the beach, so not the best hair day, but whatever. <laughs> I don't think anybody cares. Rather see yarn and beads than what my hair looks like, I think. Okay, the further I put the camera, though, the less likely I'm going to be able to see um, your comments. So I'm going to do the best I can, but I do think that you can see the yarn now. So these are, uh, you know, the tidbit size of... Be so fine yarn which means it's 200 yards instead of the whole 650 yards uh, so I'm just showing these because they're smaller and easier to put everything in front of me but you could still buy the full size of any of these but I wanted to show which beads look really nice with which colors of yarn so these are the preciosa crystal beads that I've just put in my shop and those of you that aren't familiar with preciosa it is the same quality as Swarovski, but without the cost of the super famous brand name. They're still Czech glass crystal beads, and I buy them with the AB finish, so they are extremely gorgeous. They are the bicone shape. Look at that. I'm just twisting my strand, and look how far away that is from the camera, and you can already see it sparkling. So they are absolutely amazing. This is color sapphire AB, I believe. Yes, yeah, so... This is color Sapphire AB, and I wanted to show you that this one actually would probably go with any blue or green on the table, including the blue shadow. Still have a few colors of blue shadow left, but I mean, it would go with anything all the way from Raven to any of the, the silvery grays, like Ice Silver Fox and Moonstone. Let's see, what's gonna make this pop? Maybe if I put stuff in front of a white piece of paper, is that better? for showing yarn and beads together. So I'll do, so this is Sapphire AB, and I'll show you next to Chantilly Lace, Celestial Blue Topaz, Celestial Blue, Blue Mist and Caribbean Turquoise, then Stormy Sea, uh, Blue Danube and Aloha, Harbor Fog, Jaded Peacock, and Calypso line. You know, maybe I show all the blue and greens next to each other. This might be a better way to be more efficient about it because I got a lot to show you today. So let's do all, I'll do all the blues and well, let's do all the beads first and then I'll, then I'll separate them out by what goes with what. All right, we'll figure this out as we go. So each of these are the 44 bead strands, and depending on the color, some of them come in 30 bead packs, and some of them come in the 44 strands, 44 bead strands, and it's just based on my supplier and what they have available, and colors that I still wanted to have. So we'll start with the strands. Nah. Okay, so try to do this in front of the white piece of paper. Here's Light Colorado Topaz AB, Sapphire AB. Yeah, let's we'll figure this out eventually. <laughs> and there's Blue Zircon AB. 
AB is a type of finish that makes them extra sparkly. This is Light Siam AB. And this is Aqua AB. And this is Crystal AB, meaning they are the clear crystals, but with the AB finish. And anytime you're not sure what color yarn will go with what color bead, this is always a good idea. Crystal AB will look good on anything. And because of that AB finish, it will sparkle and pop on any color of yarn. I mean anything, as dark as they come. Raven and Parisian Bordeaux, still gorgeous with that one. This is Light Amethyst AB. And here's Peridot AB. AB is a type of finish that makes them extra sparkly. I'm sure there's a technical excuse, um, explanation too, but that's that's basically the gist of it. I wanted to show you one of the ones that I'm super excited about and I'd love to make a necklace in is Calypso Lime and Peridot AB. How gorgeous are they together? I mean, right? And then the other thing that I'm super inspired by is looking at these three together, and this may sound crazy, uh, but looking at blue Peridot, or yeah, blue Zircon, Aqua, and Crystal AB, all three together, this makes me want to do a beaded tunic, like, like a tunic like I'm wearing, where you would bead motifs down this collar area in these three colors, and then do the rest of it in white maybe. But So I was thinking that if I did a top with these three colors and those three colored beads. Wouldn't that be amazing? So this is Blue Zircon, Aqua, and Crystal, all three AB, and this is Aloha Blue, Caribbean Turquoise, and Chantilly Lace. Um, whether you did jewelry in this combination or uh, the beaded front of a tunic, I don't even know, but these three are just swirling thoughts in my head right now. And I'll explain uh, a little more about that in a few minutes. So, having shown you all those, oh, I forgot to show you the 30 pack beads too. So, then we've got oh, three other colors here. We've got Tanzanite, Tanzanite AB, and um, Violet AB, and then I have Rose AB. So, you can see all of these, and what you're going to see from even me just showing them up to the camera, separate from looking at them in the shopping cart, you can see that they all kind of go, all the pinks and purples all go with my pinks and purple yarns, and all the turquoises and blues and greens go with all of my blues and green yarns. So here's a thought, if you wanted to grab one strand of each of four different blues and greens, they're all gonna look amazing with any ball of yarn. If you want to pick just any one, I mean, Colorado Blue Topaz would look amazing with any of the neutrals. And it's neutral enough that it might go with anything anyway, but you know, the spot on ones. Imagine doing a crystal chain necklace with Colorado Blue Topaz and pure gold. Be so fine yarn. I mean, it would just be spectacular. Can you imagine a bracelet or a necklace in this? So, so pretty. But you could pick up on the gold in Tuscan Terrace or in Sangria. Check that out. Let's see if I can get the beads to go across. Look at that. It would just really dress it up so much. Wouldn't that be beautiful on either one of those colors? It just pulls out that gold color in, ah, I dropped it on the floor. All right, well, if we don't need it again, I'll leave it there. Uh, okay, let's see, does anybody have any special, re oh, you know what, even, even with something like Chris from the Charlie's Angel series, you could even go with Col like Colorado Topaz be so pretty with that. And don't forget that Crystal AB will go with any of these. And I wanted to show you Crystal AB even with the dark colors like Blue Danube and Raven and Parisian Bordeaux. Crystal AB would look amazing on all of them because it'll give you that wonderful sparkle, but it would actually pick up on the color of the yarn too. 
Okay, does anybody have any, rec oh, one more. Light Siam would be amazing. Light Siam would be amazing with Sangria, with any of the pinks, it would be great with crushed berries. Million Dollar Red, which seems to be missing. Um, red Maple, Red Maple Shadow, and Parisian Bordeaux. Okay, but I think that I will ask you guys what kind of requests you have to see beads together. Um, the violet with any of the purples. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Which one is this? Is this violet or tanzanite? This is tanzanite, and uh, I'll pull the violet out too. Okay, so I wanted to show you the three that are kind of purple-y, purple-ish, are going to be sapphire. Okay, so we've got sapphire AB, tanzanite AB, and Violet AB. Now between those three, all three are gonna go beautifully with, this would be Stormy Sea, Lilac Memories, Passionate Plum, uh, Lavender's First Romance, and even going into the uh, Pink Damask, and then to do all those purples, you have to consider that crushed berries would be pretty with it too. And imagine getting a small amount of each of those four colors and mixing them up and assorting them. Um, uh, let's see. Hi, pa hi, Pamela, thanks for joining. So does anybody have any, re any other requests? So like the purples will go with anything. Do I have any in gold colors? Yeah, I was showing the um, light Colorado Topaz. This is a very beautiful soft gold. Cyan with Raven, yes, that would be pretty. That would be very dramatic, beautiful. Yeah, so basically they all look good with anything. <laughs> oh, and here's a light, light amethyst. Light amethyst would go with anything too. Um, Pamela, yeah, this is a free pattern. This is the chandelier earrings on my website. You can download the free pattern with the chart. There's also a video for it. Also a fabulous contender for beads. There are chain, excuse me, there are chain three spaces throughout this project. And in any of those chain three spaces, you could add a bead in the second of the three chains. Let me count them right now. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got 12 chain three spaces on here. So this would be a bead. Uh, this would be a neck. Uh, this would be an earring that would need 12 beads. So no matter what yarn you chose, you could do one pack of beads to bead this earring. That would be gorgeous. So for this earring, I would consider uh, this one in tropical hot coral. I would consider rose. I would also consider crystal AB. I think that'd be great. I think Siam would look really great with there. And to be honest with you, I would love to see a contrast. Maybe the Peridot or the Aqua AB, and even the Blue Zircon might be super fun on there. I think the contrast might be fun. Does anybody have any other requests for these? I love beads too, Patricia. Oh, and then, I am selling beading needles now too. So you can get a four pack of beading needles like these. Um, if you are having trouble finding beads at home, you can pick up a pack of a four pack of beading needles and they work really great because they have a large eye on them. That's wonderful for sliding your yarn into it. And it's also small enough and collapsible enough to slide through the small beads. DJ has not worked with beads yet. If you watch, my Leah Capelet video that I released a couple of days ago. Where is the Leah Capelet? I have a uh, rolling rack right here with all the pieces from both layers books, but we'll show those in due time. <laughs> but if you watch the video for this Capelet, the Leah Capelet the other day, um, at the end of the video, I show you how to add beads and do one row of crocheting with beads. 
So if you haven't worked with beads before with crochet, I highly recommend watching the end of that video and you will see how wonderfully easy it is to crochet with beads. You'll be surprised how much easier it is than you think, especially if you're just going to do the end row of something. It's a smaller commitment than deciding to bead a whole project. And I think it's a great beginner way to add to begin adding beads to something. Great question. Yeah, you know what, Sherry? <laughs> My extender cord wasn't plugged in all the way. Whoopsie. Now it's plugged in. Yeah, I uh, I have my microphone on, but I didn't have it plugged in. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, Pamela, it's a great way to start with beads. But start with a small project like a pair of earrings or start, or start with one row only at the bottom edge of a project. Doing something small is a great way to get started. As you know, when you're learning a new stitch technique, doing it in a scarf instead of a garment is an easier way to learn too. So if you want to add beads, and it's so fun to add beads to projects, the best way to start is with something small or easy. Thanks, Naomi. Yep, I didn't have it plugged in all the way. Whoopsie. Oh, ba bracelets would be absolutely gorgeous. Think about how much you move your hands. So you put beads on something that moves that much, it'll sparkle all day long. Um, yeah, beads in a skinny scarf, absolutely. The, uh, the wonderful thing about beads, is about really sparkly beads like this, is that once you put them on and you go about your life, because of how much you move, you make them sparkle. I mean, look at what I was showing you. Uh, where's my paper? Look at, well, not white. Look how much it sparkles just with the movement. I mean, they just don't stop. It's so fun. Anyway, does anybody have any other questions about beads or want to see any other color combinations? So basically what I was getting at in all of this is that they all match with everything. So I really thought that I picked the right colors to really just, you really can't pick a bad combination between the beads and the yarn. And if you're ever in doubt, Crystal AB goes with anything. So if anybody else wants to see anything specifically, I'd be happy to take requests. Otherwise, we'll move on to another uh, show and tell this morning. Uh, Lisa, Lisa, the capelet tells you how many beads you'll need. So depending, on, I can't remember what the number is off the top of my head, but uh, to do the last row, I think was one strand, but you'll have to double check. It's all there. Thanks, Patricia. I think I read your typo, Lisa. I don't think I had a problem. <laughs> yeah, I would rather you double check on the number. Um, might be 39, but I can't remember, so please double check. But it's not a lot to do the bottom row of the capelet. What is the color of the tidbit next to Chris? Oh, this is a uh, tropical hot coral, same color that I'm wearing in the earrings. Can you add length to the shrug? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Pamela. I love the new shrug too. It's a great piece for putting on. Once you tie something, uh, do a corset tie in the front, you can turn a two-dimensional piece into a three-dimensional piece, and there's so much more wearing possibilities. Because anytime you have to use your arms, it's a lot easier to keep it styled and to be able to go about your day. That's what I love about things that you can secure on like that. And I just think a corset tie is so pretty anyway. You could also bead the corset tie or just bead the bottom dangles of it. Or you could put tassels on it. You could do that too. Um, yeah, sure, Pamela. You could, you could add length to the back too. You could do it in short rows, I suppose. Uh, Barbara wants to refresh her knitting skills with the Tasha shawl. That's a great idea because it's not that difficult to make. Um, there is some lace in it, but it's not, it's not the most difficult lace you've ever seen. This would also be absolutely gorgeous with beads. This is the shawl she's talking about. It's a top-down construction 
where you start at the top edge here. There will be a video, hopefully by next week. I don't have it done yet. But you start up here and work your way down with increases. So it ends up being a top-down triangular sort of shape. You do a little bit of lace in the center gusset, and then the lace that you do in there, you repeat along the lower edge. And then I added a pico bind off here. Can you see the little picos in the bind off? Which is really wonderful for um, blocking. It gives you very precise points for blocking the shawl. But also it's a great opportunity to add beads in those picos. Wouldn't that be beautiful? And the pattern does say how many beads you would need to do that. It's a lot more than on the capelet. Obviously you can see all those picos but it would be absolutely stunning to add beads to that lower edge. I mean, it just would make it an incredible masterpiece, right? Yeah, and not the most difficult shawl pattern in the world. Absolutely not. Most of it's in garter stitch. See that? That's just knit every row. And a little bit of feather and fan. Uh, question about the Leah capelet, but I did not get to see the whole thing. Something about whether I started it, but I actually finished it, so I'm not sure what that means. But maybe we'll see the question again. If not, I'll wait a second here and then move on. Uh, oh, someone else was asking. Okay, I missed. I was in the middle of a side conversation. That's what it was. <laughs> Yeah, Karen, I agree. Never too late to learn how to knit. Okay, so the next thing I thought I'd show you this morning. Um, Aranita loves the shawl. Thank you very much. Regina doesn't know how to knit. Yeah, I'm going to second Karen. It's never too late to learn something new if that's what you want to do. And if you don't want to learn to knit and you're happy crocheting, that's fine too. There's no wrong way to be creative. Uh, oh yeah, this light's amazing. This is that light that I've talked about before. This is the one, this is actually the dual purpose one. You can make it a tabletop lamp or it comes with an extended pole to make it a floor model, which I prefer because I use my table so much. But this is the one that has these super bright LED lights for looking at your work. And then it also has this incredible magnifying lamp. Don't know if it'll show up so much, but you put your hand you put your hands underneath it. It's like I'm showing it to you right here, but what you do is you put it in your lap and you work underneath or you face it towards your lap and you work underneath it and your hands and your yarn and your stitches are lit up so much and they're magnified, you can see your work so easily under here. It is a game changer for dark yarn or for working in low light or working in the evening or not disturbing your family during movie night and still staying crafty. It is a game changer of a lamp and I have a link to that uh, lamp in the video description below. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, if anybody doesn't have any other questions about what we've talked about so far, I'm going to move on to another project to show you. And, okay, so I told you that I've been gradient dyeing uh, Be So Brave yarn in jumbo balls, meaning they're going to be twice the size of regular Be So Brave balls. And I wanted to show you what the gradients look like when they're knit up. These patterns will be available next week, not now. Um, still in the process, but I wanted you to see the colors and how the purple gradient is working. This is one ball and this will be one ball when it's done. And um, what I, in, I know I've mentioned this to you in the past that when to, in order to gradient dye, I actually have to knit the yarn first. So I have this little machine. It's a hand crank machine, not automatic. So it's very, very labor intensive. But I thought to give you a flair for what the colors will look like, I wanted to show you what those knit blanks look like. So here's the purple knit blank that makes these cowls. And I wanted to show you how the different colors that I dyed, how they will blend, how they blend together. Remember I told you I dyed them so that you could actually use them for uh, a multi-ball project. So the next color in the sequence is this one that goes from purple, that same violet purple, to a turquoise. 
And then the next one in the series goes from that turquoise to green. And then the next ball, <laughs> the next color in that series goes from the green back to the violet. Isn't that amazing? So you won't buy them like this. What will happen now is I will be winding these into center pull cakes. So you'll see the color go from one color in the center to a different color on the outside. But I thought this would give you a nice visual for how they will go from one color to the next. So this one went from a berry to a violet. And then we went from violet to turquoise and then <laughs> turquoise to green and you can see how each of the color combinations picks up on the color next to it so they're not identical and then it went from the green back to a violet really cool right thanks Lisa yeah they're all really beautiful and they'd all be beautiful on their own so like the green and blue is going to be a beautiful combination the violet and turquoise is going to be a gorgeous combination the turquoise and green is going to be a gorgeous combination and as you see here the uh, berry and violet is a gorgeous combination as well so any one of them is gorgeous on their own but if you felt like doing a larger project or a shawl, it might be fun to add a second color. Or I want to show you one other thing. Imagine if you wanted to do a shawl and you wanted to use just one color. What you would do is to extend the stripe. If you wanted it to still only change color one time, you would start both balls with the same, col same color end and you would alternate balls every other row to keep the color to last, to make that color change, uh, or color last longer before the change. Or if you wanted it to go from plum to violet and back to plum, then you would start each ball from a different end. Can you see that too? So you could do it that way as well. And that would be great for a circular project or a top-down project or a side-to-side -side project. So depending on how you wanted to change the colors. Uh, well, Ava, I am selling the blanks. I'm going to wind them into a ball. Is that? I don't know what you mean. This is what will be sold, but it'll just be wound into a ball first. It's not. Um, it's not a finished. Uh, it's not a finished um, scarf or anything. Thank you. This is a free pattern on my website. It's called Fine Chandelier Earrings, and you can find the pattern with chart and video on my website. Um, can I use the beads with this yarn? Uh, the four millimeter beads might be a little too small, but I do have some larger beads that I will be releasing next week in case you would like to bead with these projects too. Absolutely, or with this yarn. Hi from Montreal. Thanks for joining live. I was born in Montreal at Sacre Coeur Hospital. You mean not wound. Um, yeah, if you want to make a special request in your order to not wind it, that's fine. Yeah, no problem, Sherry. Yeah, I'll be selling, I'll probably have some six millimeter beads for sale with these. Yeah, Karen, if you'd rather sell, a, if you'd rather purchase it as a blank, that's fine. Thanks, Rebecca. Yeah, sure, no problem. I'll have to wind at least one for the photos, but uh, I'll try to keep some unwound to see if uh, anyone prefers the orders that way. No problem. Happy to oblige. How much are they going to be? They're going to be around $40. I have to figure out the... Uh, somewhere around $40. Probably $39.99, something in that range. Does anybody have any other questions about these? I love all the colors too, Lisa. Thank you very much. And this is actually, this is American Merino wool. If you're not familiar with Be So Brave yarn, it's American Merino wool and it's not chemically treated. So this would 
this wood felt. So you will need to be aware that this would make a great felting project. And if you don't want to felt it, you would need to um, make sure you don't throw it in the washing machine with hot water. <laughs> so um, it, the difference between superwash and not treated yarn is it hasn't been chemically processed. Superwash wool means once it's been chemically processed, you can throw it in the washing machine and it won't felt. But this is unprocessed, pure American merino wool that comes from one source, one ranch in the US, and it has not been treated at all. So it is feltable. So whether you want to felt it or not, you will need to treat it accordingly. <laughs> Yeah, not being treated is wonderful. You know, it's a great convenience sometimes to have superwash, and it's a great um, option to have it untreated sometimes. Uh, Grace says it works up like a dream. It sure does. It's incredibly soft. It has a ton of loft. Uh, loft meaning there's a lot of air inside the yarn, so it's very squishy, and it's super, super soft. Um, worsted weight so it does work up really quickly as well good morning lily thanks for joining live yeah rapture is perfect for this yarn absolutely lisa absolutely oh thanks lynn lynn suggesting the thumbs up thank you lynn all right well we are almost out of time um I have a surprise, or not a surprise, I have, uh, I learned some really exciting news last night and I uh, am not sure how or when I'm gonna be able to share it with you, but I can assure you that there's something exciting coming up in a couple of months and I know you're gonna be excited about it too, but I gotta figure out the hows, whens, and whys of when I can officially say it. I actually have to sign a contract probably before I can even tell you, so that will be my sneak peek. <laughs> If anybody has an, if, but if nobody has any other questions about anything, uh, Ava, am I doing any reds? I'm guessing you mean with this yarn that everything I'm doing for this set is already done. Um, the Be So Brave yarn will be up for sale in um, this weekend or by Monday at the latest, but most likely, most likely later today, as soon as I can. Or no, most likely Monday, most likely Monday. Yeah, lots of lots of repeats. Maybe there's a delay. All right. Well, thanks everybody for taking time out of your busy Saturday to spend a few minutes with me. I hope you enjoyed seeing the beads with how they go with the different colors of Be So Fine yarn. Hope you enjoyed seeing the new gradients for Be So Brave yarn. And if you have any other questions, please also feel welcome to uh, leave them for me in the comments. P Pamela, this lamp is not available on Amazon. I have the link in the bottom of the video description for this lamp, and there's a uh, review of the lamp on my website. It's the magnifying lamp, but it's not available on Amazon. The link's in the video description at the bottom as one of the sponsors of the show. If you have any questions, any, if you need any help finding the link, please feel welcome to email me or leave me a comment. I'm more than happy to help. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you all on Monday. Have a great weekend, everyone.